might as well write our votes in a fart and then put them in a bottle, throw them out to sea, and then whatever washes up, that's who wins. So then we have the right to call for division, which means count the votes. And they wouldn't do it. Wow. Our own chairs wouldn't do it for us. Because they're higher up in the party. So it's just like, no business actually took place. It was a big TV commercial. It's all timed. They don't want you to call for division. They don't want you to actually have a political process, a democratic process, because it messes up their, their script. They've had dress rehearsals. They want to time it for the TV commercial to come on. It's not a democratic process. It's a dog and pony show. That's all it is. Beforehand, so is the party unified completely? Not necessarily. But again, uh, the Clinton campaign feels as though last night helped them to take a big stride forward. So, all right, thanks, Kristen. How was your experience in there? I got two delegates here. Uh, was it terrible for you, or how was it for you in there? Uh, Sad and tragic. I felt like we were watching a relative die, huh. and uh, that it was. I know that the people who have campaigned for Hillary are thrilled and elated. And I, I believe Hillary Clinton's weak stance on climate change is a disaster for the future of human beings on the face of this planet. Yeah. So true. <laughs> In addition to the crime stated, we the people of the United States also find Hillary Clinton guilty for the theft of democracy for the 126,000 people in Brooklyn alone who were robbed of their right to vote due to the bribery that happened when a certain member of the Board of Elections was given $6 million by the family of a Clinton superdelegate. And 
anyways, where is Arizona? Why aren't they having a recount? Everything there was rigged. This whole thing was, it, it's pretty up. And we're tired of it. That's why we're here. We all did our research. And you know what? They keep saying millennials are showing up at the DNC. You know, last time I looked around, at least half of these people were baby boomers. I was camping at Parvin State Park and at least like about half the people that were there were baby boomers. So don't tell me this is a millennial thing. We have people of all ages. I met someone the age of my grandmother. All right, here you go. Now what Hillary said, I am so sick and tired of Bernie Sanders supporters and their lies and then not doing their research. Anyone remember when she said that? I'm being sure we do our goddamn research. That's why we're out here. Next time anyone tells anyone tells you it's either Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump. Tell me
issues um that's what we're standing behind and we're going in full force tonight florida california washington state people that were here almost on their last dimes ready to go and work for their delegations as hard as they possibly could um, to make sure that everyone was getting the communication they needed and the support that they needed and um, our volunteer coordinators uh, were working very hard to get our credentials and they were not able to get those credentials. On Tuesday, we were told, you know, there's very little hope we're going to be able to get credentials because of what they, I mean, they experienced so much frustration with the DNC that they said, you know, go out and protest, try to do the best you can from the outside to help. Um, we felt very helpless. Our delegations needed our support and they didn't have it. Um, and there were hundreds of Hillary volunteers filling the entire space, handing out Hillary signs and making sure that people were behaving. Um, they were we were told not to wave any Bernie gear or paraphernalia during the wrong times. Um, and we have seen things like members of our delegations holding like this sign, Palestinian for Palestinian human rights. They were told they had these signs ripped out of their hands and ripped apart so that they could not be used because they did not want that shown on camera. So they are not being fair to the volunteers. They're not being fair to the Bernie's delegates. And they're showing contempt. I think they're showing contempt to the American people. So, uh, how do you feel about the Democratic Party now? Are you part of the Dem Exit? I am not part of Dem Exit. I'm one of the rare few. I am for I am for Dem Enter. I believe we need to infiltrate and take over our party. We need to take our party back. I think that's the most immediate plan that we can follow. Um, we're doing it in my local area. There are a lot of neoliberals in charge in a very rich and supposedly liberal area. We're taking over our party and moving it to the left. Um, I support efforts to start a progressive party for the 99%. I'm going to be putting my efforts into both places, but I think it's important when people are bullying people that you don't walk away. You stay and you fight. So. I grab back. And now we had a struggle going, and I realized, uh-oh, you know, I'm probably going to get accused of assaulting a police officer here. So I let go of it, and he, and he got a hold of the tag. It was the actual credential. He ripped it off and said, you have no credential. So I was like, well, on what authority do you, a police officer, keep credential an elected delegate to a political convention? No answer. In the meantime, 
Mike Capadre, Mr. John Knight, who is also an elected delegate, a very good man, was behind me, and he was in the doorway. He was in the doorway behind me, and he just did what was a good thing to do. I wish we had all just sat down inside, but but uh, we got to. He got to, into the doorway, and he just very passively, quietly, peacefully, just stopped walking. He didn't say a word. He didn't say anything nasty to the police. He's a very gentle man, very level-headed guy. More, more level-headed than I am at age 58. I'm too pissed off. <laughs> anyway, so the police start manhandling him. And so the crowd's like going, hey, knock it off. Knock it off. And I keep telling this officer, this is John Knight. He's an elected delegate. He's a very peaceful man. He won't fight you. Stop assaulting him. And after about four times, they let him go, and he walked out. But this is this is it. I want you to know it was the perfect merger of the police state and the corporate state. That is known in a political dictionary as fascism, and that's exactly what happened tonight. I was decredentialed, not by my party, not by my candidate, but by the police for exercising my rights as an elected, official. As an elected person. Yes, we, uh, as an at-large delegate, I theoretically represent 80,000 people. Can you say the thing about how you felt during her speech, militaristic, militaristic, again? I felt like it was the German Reichstag 1936. It, it, it was jingoism, it wasn't patriotism. It, 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 it was jingoism. We chanted no more war, and you know how they responded to Thank that? You. Thank you. They chanted USA. Oh USA. My God. Every time. Oh, of course. Hi. Check, check. Hi. <laughs> unified with all these people who are equally as enraged as I am about what has taken place over the last year and a half or so. The way that Bernie has been treated, the way the delegates have been treated, the way that Bernie surrogates have been treated, all of his supporters, and the way that this has just been blatantly stolen from us and nobody in the mainstream media is covering it. They refuse to even mention it. And Everyone here is here in a united front. These are all good people, and we just want justice. We just want our voices heard. And just, I, I can't. I am not a. I am enraged over the disenfranchisement that has taken place and the how we are screaming to, to, to preserve our democracy. It is just, I feel like I'm living in an Orwellian nightmare right now. And I was like, <laughs> I, sometimes I think I'm just, it's a nightmare. I just, I, I feel like I'm not sleeping and that someone needs to punch me in the face and wake me up. Because <laughs> I just, this is, I mean, it's been, it's been a surreal experience and trying to explain to people who are not supporters, they just, they look at you like you have six heads and I, <laughs> I, it, I, I just feel very fortunate that I'm around people who, who understand and who, who are all here in, in solid earth. We did, we walked out early during Hillary's speech, uh -huh. but they also wouldn't let us exit. They so wouldn't let you exit. They wouldn't let us, they let us out of the Wells Fargo Center, but because we were on foot, they won't let us exit where cars exit. We thought we could get out by the subway station. They said no. They, they made us walk all the way to the Holiday Inn to get out. And the reason is they don't want us to exit where you guys are yeah, to give you inspiration for the movement. Right. Right? Yeah. They're just trying to keep everybody separate. Yeah, they've been telling us for the last three days. They've been saying, oh, this is happening over here. And that you guys are over It's here, all misinformation. Yeah. yeah. And they so they've been spreading us out. They've also said that they that they were protecting um, you guys from us. Yes. Oh, God forbid I get a hug. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. Right here, I'll give you another one. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, 100 to 200 of us inside, but hundreds more were streaming out. And so to prevent more of us from gathering inside the media tent, they actually locked the doors and police surrounded everybody who was sitting very peacefully and quietly, and we couldn't leave. 
So then we had to have a representative negotiate with the police to allow us to leave. And they did that so that we couldn't actually fill the media tent. So many of us were protesting outside. And then we were in there for about an hour, maybe a little more than an hour, until they let us out. And then some of us stood on the steps of the media tent for another hour. How were you treated by the Clinton people during this time? Like the individual Clinton supporters? Well, in the Oregon delegation, Oregonians are really nice. So for the most part, the, the Bernie and Clinton caucuses got along fine. There were a couple people that were obstinate and rude, and there were some shouting matches. I, mean, I, I heard from someone like carrying an uh, anti-TTP sign. Uh, you know, gets them like, you know, They get angry, they think we're being disrespectful, but you know, even Clinton said she was against the TPP, like, hello, you guys. Well, you know, she, what she says and what she means are always two different. A, a lot of us after this week have a lot less hope in this party than we had before, right? Yeah. And I just want to say how much we appreciate it. We were inside the whole time, and we're going through emotional abuse, physical abuse for a whole week. I just want to say how grateful we are that we had our people outside. <laughs> that we had our people outside fighting out here as hard as we were fighting inside. But you can tell by the demographics of our voting that these people are dying out, right? Yeah. We're gonna have 15% of the electorate, 15% of the electorate in 10 years, okay? This is our country now. The protesters you see in the streets, the protesters that you see inside, the actions that you see inside, this is taking over our country now, okay? And I want to tell you from, from, from Portland, Oregon to Philadelphia, I just, I'll, I'll give off the, the megaphone, but from Portland, Oregon to Philadelphia, we are so grateful that our people were out here fighting as hard as we, harder than we were fighting outside. And uh, we're going to stand together with you guys in solidarity uh, throughout this revolution. Thank you guys. Thank you. The California delegates, is it de the gal delegates, are the largest of our delegate collection and the loudest. Um, so the DNC wants to downplay them the best they can. What they did today, uh, many of you saw rumors that um, there were Craigslist ads looking for actors to fill seats uh, to act as Hillary supporters as these super political people. They were actors, got 50 bucks a pop. Um, not bad for a good day's work, but what the DNC did was two hours before the California delegates were told to arrive at the um, convention center, the seat fillers came in and took their seats. And as we all know, or might not know, once somebody is in your seat, you cannot take it. Um, even if you go there and leave for the bathroom, if a seat filler takes it, you cannot re-enter the convention hall. So they essentially blocked all of the California delegates from entering the convention hall. Our friend, uh, Eden Mc, uh, McFadden, was live streaming the entire thing, explaining this to all. And uh, I hit up social media right away. Um, so I, I tweeted out, urgent, hashtag Dems in Philly using seat fillers to block our California delegates from entering the convention with the link to the live stream and share. Uh, this got caught in C-SPAN's automatic retweeting, uh, except they also overlaid it over their coverage, their global coverage of the Dem convention. And uh, they retweeted my calling out of basically fascism. It's the government controlling um, what the public sees. It's propaganda and just misconstruing the truth. And uh, I'm very proud of this tweet. It was, it, was a, it was a small win for what was an otherwise demeaning day and demoralizing day. You, I award you the golden tweet of the convention. I here. humbly accept. Ah, <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. No, he's from Seattle. Very Quaker. I really, I have to say, I'm here to tell you that I love Bernie Sanders. I love Bernie.
Bernie Sanders, he is my hero. Yeah. Yeah, I worship and I, I listen to everything he says and does and every move he makes and every inflection and tone and expression that he doesn't make. I want everybody here to know this man is your hero. Do not mourn him. He is alive and well and telling us what to do. It's whatever you hear him tell you to do. If you want to be on this side, it's Bernie Sanders that led us here. If you can stomach it on the inside, get in there. Because I couldn't. I tried and, and I got to vote for Bernie Sanders for President of the United States today. That is amazing. We did this. We did this. We got to vote for Bernie Sanders for President of the United States. Jewish socialist from Vermont. The crazy haired guy, as all my family would call him, that crazy guy from Vermont, my hero, Bernie Sanders. Yeah. Let's give him all the love right now. We need to give him the love because he is in there fighting for us still. I promise. I promise you. Bernie Sanders lives in us. He is my hero. I love him. I will not mourn him. I am here with you. We need to give those support in him. That's amazing. If you got the stomach for this, go for it. And here, thank you. Give Bernie your love and stay the course. Whatever he tells you to do, do it however it feels to you. Thank you. Uh, welcome to Bernie Blackout News, straight from Philly. I'm here with a member of the brand new Congress project who's uh, likely to be voted to as state rep in uh, next term. So hi, can you introduce yourself to our friends? My name's Ian Sorensen. I'm a uh, delegate from Congressional District 6 in Illinois, uh, which is McHenry County and a little bit of Kane County in northwestern suburbs of Chicago. So um, Josh Fox today at the noted that there was like a cultural difference between Bernie delegates and some of the other delegates who are a little more corporatized. Did you notice that in there? You know what I'll tell you about my, uh, I had never met a Hillary Clinton supporter until I got to the DNC. And when I walked in there, uh, it was very apparent who the Hillary Clinton supporters were because they were all women over the age of 50 who very closely resembled Hillary Clinton or elderly uh, African-American women uh, who are still under the misguided understanding that Bill Clinton was beneficial to the uh, colored people's plight in life. Uh, there are also a small spattering of what I assume are like sorority girls, those fake feminists who, who pretend that they're feminists, but really what they are is, you know, anti-misogynist, so uh, misandrinist. Got you. you sort know. of feminism out of context with the struggles that are going on. Um, and we value, I'm considering myself a good feminist. I, I like to consider myself yeah, a feminist too. I believe in equality rights, for everybody, rights, you know? Rights. Men, women, homosexuals, yes. gays, lesbians, pot transgender, smokers, pot transgender, pot smokers, transgender, you know, people of color. Anybody who is a person around. deserves to have the same Two rights. Two white guys throwing down rights that's for the right, rest. That's you, Mr. Trump, we're gonna have, we're taking rights out. That's right. Know, that's right. Rights for all the rights for everybody. Yeah, not just for billionaires. Rights. They're not just for billionaires anymore. <laughs> that's they're right. For everybody. That's right. Um, so, uh, brandnewcongress.org has this very funny idea that people with hair, like everyday citizens, should be involved, and I think that's great. I think that we need to clean house across the board because even if there has been a good senator or a good uh, House representative. Uh, the fact that they allow corruption to continue to move on in their respective uh, section of Congress is an indicator that they're not really as good as as we would like to think that they are. You know, uh, the fact that for my entire life we haven't had a politician until Bernie Sanders who wasn't owned, bought and paid for by some multinational conglomerate or another, it's big pharma, big oil, big you know insurance, you name it, they've all bought somebody. Uh, you know, and I think it's time for regular Joes like me and you to get back in there and make this a you know a, a, a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. You know. That's right. Um, so if you think this is a good idea. You should go to brandnewcongress.org and get involved. So uh, send the donation to brandnewcongress.org on behalf of this dude. And uh, let's support each other as we make a new world. That's right. So um, many things I heard 
about like how we respond to the trauma of the situation. And it is truly, it's important to recognize that this is a terrible thing we've been through. We've been like cheated and lied from, completely swindled. And uh, so I just want to thank you for putting up with the DNC all these years. Thank you. Oh, no problem, man. I'll tell you this, this election was stolen from the beginning, okay? We didn't have a chance to win. The fact that even with the deck stacked against us from the beginning, we still hit 47% of the vote at the roll call, okay? Yeah. Those are great numbers, considering that they called us a fringe candidacy from the beginning, okay? Yes. This doesn't end today. The revolution continues. Bernie Sanders not being the president is not the end of this, okay? Yeah. We gotta get involved in state and local Go take over your school board, take over your city board, take over your county board, take over your state house, your state senate, and let's fill this up with some real state, you know, replace your governors too. That's the most important thing because there's That's way right. too many Republican That's governors right. out there. Too many just abstracted, cook, cookie cutter, square, white dudes in suits and ties, strangling themselves day after day. You know, and you don't have to be as hip as us to get involved. You just yeah. have to have the right idea. His hair is much better than yours ever has to be. <laughs> and uh, don't worry. But if you do have good hair, you're still allowed to run for Congress. That's like right. Like my friend here. Ian. That's right. Brand new Congress. Don't Brand give up. We're going to save the planet yet. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Happy 
along with the delegates. Now, why aren't you singing happy? <laughs> and I have with me an, incre an incredible man, his incredible progr multiple progressive talk shows. This is Tim. votes left to be counted but they said Hillary Clinton won by 400,000 votes so how does that happen I'm on the hunt to tell you how they're gonna steal the election in November it's a crime it's a heist that is going on we're in the middle of the crime right now Hell has taught me was that provisional ballots are placebo ballots they're fake ballots they, they basically should say on them nice try go home all right, because they are not counted, and when they're counted, as in California, it's too late. All right, they're counting them now in California. It doesn't matter now. So if they give you a provisional ballot when you go to vote, tell them thank you, I understand, but how about you yourself? All right, yeah. tell them that. Yeah. You need to stand there and demand you get your right to vote because well, the provisional ballots, they, they, we might as well write our votes in a fart and then put them in a bottle, throw them out to sea, and then whatever washes up, that's who wins. They're, they're absolutely meaningless, all right? And then, you know, we, we, uh, there's something else that we got into on Redacted tonight, is the fact that the exit polls in a lot of these states yeah. did not match up with the voter results, all right? The voting machine results. And then, when you point that out, we created a hashtag on Redacted tonight, hashtag exit poll gate. And when you point that out and it starts getting some traction, then everybody in the, 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 the mainstream media, they ignore it for a long time. Then when they can't ignore it anymore, they go, exit polls don't matter. They don't matter at all. That's funny, because when exit polls are way off in other countries, we accuse them of election fraud, okay? So it's bull exit polls don't matter. We, and then they canceled the exit polls before California because it was getting too much traction. People were talking about it. People realized that those exit polls were not matching up to the results. So demand that we have an accountable system, an accountable uh, uh, voting machine where it's not just a black box, a mystery box that you can never see inside. You just need to have faith in. It's a magic box, all right? We need to have voting machines. We can see the code, open source. We can see what's going on. And that, if we won't go back to paper ballots, but at the very least, chances so they're not willing to talk about it but one man who was willing to talk about it I'd like for him to talk for a little minute right now is Tim Black uh, look guys when we looked at what happened in Arizona we saw how they suppressed the vote at the polls how they made people stand out in the sun for four or five hours some longer we knew that this was a dirty trick we all knew we look we didn't need want to come give us the information you can see it you heard about it they did the same thing in puerto rico same thing all of a sudden numbers of polling stations closed machines don't work now let me ask you a question and you know respond with the yell do you think it's possible that they could have tested those machines before election day hell yeah i mean you know i mean it is an event it doesn't happen I mean, it's something you kind of gear up for. I mean, our mics work. Our election boots can't work. So these things we all talked about, we discussed it, and, and, and you said, you know what? It's time that we pull the, pull the plug on this whole thing. It's time that we expose them all. When people ask me, they say, Tim, well, Tim, why do you think that Hillary, right, is worse than Donald Trump? And I say, just look at the election results. I don't think Trump can do this. I don't think Trump can rig an election. Well, come on, guys, talk to me now. Do you think Trump has that power? Come on, man. Trump might be able to make up a catchphrase that humiliates someone. If he didn't like the Washington Times, he might call it the Washington Crimes. If he didn't like the New York Post or something, but he can't get media, he can't get people not to talk about stuff. So that's why I think that Hillary, the DNC, right now, they're exposing themselves, and that's why I'm going green, and that's what I'm telling everybody. It's the only option, man. Anyone at this point who believes that this is all an accident,
Tim's talking about? Well, <laughs> what Lee's talking about, what I'm talking about. If they think what we're talking about is all fantasy, conspiracy theory, this is what I learned in the last year. There's no such thing as a conspiracy theory. There are things, there are theories, there are ideas, there are schemes that are yet to be proved to mainstream media. See, mainstream media decides what's real, what's not real. But see, here's the thing. I don't let anything go as a conspiracy theory anymore because who would have believed that they would steal this election in this way? this election, ladies and gentlemen. This started way before it. And one of my biggest hopes, guys, is that when these folks, when you folks, all you good folks, now that you know that there are a lot of suppression going on, now that you know that the media is only printing certain stories and spending in certain ways, you will apply this to new stories. The next time you hear a story, think about it yourself and say, hmm, I wonder if there may be a different scenario to this because this is not new this is not just about Bernie Sanders this is about what they've been doing all along and what they've been doing all along is telling you what they want you to know telling you what they want you to think such as the pick up the chair thing picking up the chair remember that come on guys there was no come on they sold that story to everyone who's not here believed it they believed it So I'm going to be quiet, but I'm going to say this. It's up to all of you to keep your eyes open. Once you are awake, you cannot go back to sleep. Right? Right? That's it. That's all I want. People say, what do you want from this? You can't unknow what you know. Right? When you find that number, that she has that number. Hey, wait, we get this number from. Who's this guy you've been seeing? You might not want to tell him, but hey, now you know. He's absolutely right. You gotta question your media. You gotta question even the media you trust. Look it up. Follow. Figure out whether whether the people you trust are, are telling you the truth. And then keep looking it up and keep learning. Keep educating yourself. Because our mainstream media is a pile. Alright, it's a pile. It's 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 like a it's like a pointillism painting, you know? When you back when you when you're up close you don't see it, and then you back up and you go, oh it's a pile. It's like, a, it's, it's like a brain parasite we just gave you that causes Tourette's. So now every time you watch the mainstream media, you go, come on, really? So it's a, it's a bad, it's a bad parasite, but, and we apologize for that. But no, you got, yeah, you got to go to alternative media. You do. You have to, you have to learn this stuff for yourself because, because our mainstream media gets, they're, 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 they're they need the ratings, and they need to be nice to the advertisers, all right? And so it's all celebrity and fear stories. Every time you turn it on, be afraid, be afraid, holy be afraid. But then every commercial, do you have anxiety? We have pills that'll help you for that. All right, but now I want to get into some more of the details of the election fraud. Those of you from California, you know that went down there. Michelle Bali. One of the craziest things about living in California is that you assume you are in a liberal state, so your vote as a liberal would be safe in an election. You would think that that would be true. And what we found in the state of California was A, a system that was built to be so broken and disorganized that there is no accountability, that there is nothing that you can do to go and call them out on the number of provisional ballots that were cast. We had 2.5 million ballots that had not been counted as of election night when they called the race for Hillary Clinton in our state. We, uh, our Secretary of State came out and endorsed Hillary Clinton from the beginning of the race. And what we saw when we followed our poll workers was the
the fact that when people were going into the to the voting booths, they were being given provisional ballots constantly for no reason. These are not people who, these are people who had their voting records with them. They printed them out. They went through the process. They had changed their registration and somehow it was still their old registration or they would have their registration switched. It was absolutely pure chaos. And, and the voters who went to vote had, had their ballots sent as provisional ballots put into provisional envelopes if they were no party preference voters. The amount of people who were disenfranchised in our state was incredible. And what's crazy about all of it is the fact that California had a law passed in 2012 that said that we were supposed to have same day voter registration. The system was reported by the LA Times to have been ready in 2015. And somehow for this first primary, it wasn't ready. It wasn't ready when all the new voters wanted to come out and vote for Bernie Sanders. Now the irony of that is, now that the election's over, they are coming out and saying, oh yeah, you're absolutely right, and guess what? We have this great new system for the election in 2016. We have this great new system that's going to get everyone registered. To vote for, to vote for, to vote for, to be able to vote for the presidential candidate. So if you wrote in and asked for a ballot, you could get a ballot without Bernie's name on it. So people would write in their votes. And you know what our Secretary of State said? He said that that written in name, Bernie Sanders, could not be counted as the intention of the voter. It could not be counted as the intention of the voter if you wrote in Bernie Sanders' name on your ballot. Tell me, tell me how we are honoring the will of the voter when you have written in a candidate's name or cast on a ballot they would get ballots that were see if you were registered as a as a democrat or a no party preference and you somehow ended up on the wrong ballot because they didn't process your registration properly they would white it out they would count your ballot without the presidential nominee so tell me how we are going with the will of the voter in these instances all that we are saying is that it should be easy to go cast a ballot. You should be able to go cast a ballot for the candidate that you want, and that should be honored. That's democracy. That's basic democracy. So all that we're fighting for is for people to pay attention. We were able to turn around some of these votes by people going and watching at their polls, watching the counts, watching the poll workers. We were able to make a serious difference. And if you continue to do that, watch, watch so carefully. And hopefully we can make it so the intent of the voter is actually honored in the future. Thank you. First is if they ask you for your vote in November, say please just count my vote first from the primary and then we can discuss November. But uh, don't worry about Donald Trump, but just, just build a wall around him and make him pay for it. But tomorrow go to gregpalace.com. There's 10 ways that they can steal your vote. You saw one cross check. This is no joke. I'm hoping that by November we might at least pretend to be a democracy. And that should be the demand that we need. And hopefully Bernie's political moment will become a permanent political movement. Okay? Okay, because I, one thing I did find, I mean, years ago I, invested, I, got, I investigated the Antichrist, or you may know him as the doctor, uh, Reverend Pat Robertson. And, and I snuck into his place with my hidden cameras, and I said to him, Reverend Pat, Tell me, you said that God told you to run for president with a campaign manager like that. How can you lost? And he said, the Lord didn't tell me to win. He told me to run. And he said, now listen. Then he gave advice that I want Bernie to take 
from the mouth of the Antichrist himself. He said, I took that presidential campaign list of three billion names and I turned it into the Christian coalition. And no one takes a piss in the Republican Party without the approval of the evangelical brown shirts, okay? Now what Bernie needs is he's got a hell of a list. And hopefully, beyond politics, we will now have a permanent unchristian coalition. Maybe you can come up with a better name. Okay. Um, that's a permanent, not a moment. Forget the party, the platform fights. I mean, does anyone remember what the 2012 minimum wage party platform meant? Forget it. That's nothing. So what I want you to do is learn how to protect your vote, not Hillary's vote, your vote. Not Bernie's vote, not anyone's vote, okay? because we have an apartheid voting system in America and we're gonna learn about it. And I want you now to watch a 90 second preview of the film tomorrow where we enlist, we enlist in our efforts some stoner musician with pigtails. Can you play the film? They're bringing drugs, they're bringing crime, they're rapists, and some I assume we're good people. Why are these such secret lists? You get five years of slammer. This is voter suppression, pure and simple. And approve the Keystone Pipeline. This is destruction in progress. Paulson made a personal profit of more than $5 billion last year. Paulson sat in those rooms and didn't tell those poor schmucks that they were buying crap. And they are cooking the ballot boxes on election day. That's not about black and white, that's about right and wrong! And you would think that Jim Crow rose from the dead. <laughs> thing we do. People call into the show. They're you. It's called Freedom of Speech Friday. You can call in and you can tell your story for five minutes is your show. iTunes, Stitcher Radio, Blog Talk Radio, YouTube, and Facebook all simultaneously. Five platforms is your show. So do that. That's what we need. We need people to stand up and speak out. I'm Tim Black. Thank you for having me and I hope to see you. Keep up the fight. Keep up the fight for people's votes. Listen to Tim, read Greg's books, watch his movie, keep paying attention. Follow me on at RoeKite and Twitter, and check out our documentary Uncounted on TYT. Thank you. We're in the middle of something serious, all right? This is this is a this is a, a generational change. This is not this is not a moment. This is this is a, this is a fork in the road, all right? This is something serious. This is. This is dark versus light. This is evil versus good. This is Mel Gibson now versus 1993 Mel Gibson. All right? And a lot of us are too dumb, medicated, or blissfully uneducated to even realize it. We're going to drop down, drag out, bloody war for the, for the cultural hegemony, the cultural soul of our society. And just like, just like a fishbowl, we're just like a fishbowl. If they just give us enough food and a little plastic treasure chest for a chest of plastic treasures, we will never even question that all of our thought and all of our soul takes place inside of a two-foot bowl, all right? There is so much thought and so much news and information outside of that that we need to open our eyes to. We, we have an incredible potential, an incredible potential to change this change it around, all right? Because this unfettered, unregulated, capitalist domination of the mental sphere, the natural here and now, it's a, it's a, it's a desecration, it's a defecation, it's an extraction on anything and everything that matters to your average human being. And the question now is whether we'll put our differences aside long enough to tell the now titans of debris at the top themselves with a rusty crack. If you want to protest, keep protesting. Keep fighting. I'm now responsible for taking back my power and being and refused to aid and abet someone who is a war mongering corporatist shell. And that's what they are.
Did you know? Did you know the Republicans are bad? The Republicans are bad. They're really, really bad. It's the Republicans. Jesus Christ, the not Rachel. God, we know they suck. So do the Democrats. So do the Democrats enough. <laughs> Bernie Black Hat News here in Philadelphia covering the convention. Uh, Bernie Sanders is still widely represented around the city. Bernie Sanders paraphernalia is everywhere. Cities in, this has been here all season obviously. There's no Hillary signs. There are no bumper stickers for Hillary. There is no support for her. So what we're seeing is... Uh, we did see that one sign the airplane was flying by. It said Hillary. Do you remember? Oh yeah. It's true, InfoWars was flying a Hillary for prison <laughs> uh, plane drag by. That was funny. Um, but what you're seeing is the mass media has pretended it's like a, a different uh, level of interest. But really it's a mass movement for Bernie and crickets for her. They're flying people into the convention, free tickets if you want to go see her talk on Thursday night. Um, so last night we met a volunteer for the Bernie campaign who was uh, working at the convention. And she said she experienced uh, harassment by the Hillary people. Uh, they weren't allowed on the floor. Uh, they, they were confiscating Bernie signs. They were telling people to like be quiet. People were actually, <laughs> every time Hillary Clinton's name was mentioned, there was booing on the floor of the convention. So as this is a funny like indicator story, like that's hilarious, right? Uh, the, Bernie is giving it the old college try for party unity. God bless him. We need to have voting machines. We can see the code, open source. We can see what's going on. And that, if we won't go back to paper ballots. But at the very least, we need to see the goddamn code. That, if we won't go back to paper ballots. But at the very least, we need to see disillusion is seeing the Democratic Party, seeing the establishment within the Democratic Party at the state level, at the county level, and at the national level, and how it's really not about the people, how it's really not about the issues, and how it's really about themselves, and about them advancing their own careers. And that is just disgusting.